and loud. And it is nearly to capacity here at the historic National Stadium in Tegucigalpa. Let's uh, remind you of how these teams got here. Olympia in the semifinal against their most heated rival, Motagua, able to win the Classico and advance a, a late goal in that one to see Olympia through in the 87th minute from Carlos Sanchez. Meanwhile, other side of the bracket, one of the three Honduran teams in the tournament to make the semifinal, Real España out. And Alo Alense able to advance with a strong 3-0 performance and then seeing it out with a 2-2 draw. Mike Watts, Devin Kerr, happy to have you aboard tonight. You know, Devin, let's take a look at these two teams because they could not be in more different places. Alo Alense just lost their semifinal in the domestic league against Saprissa. But when I say they just lost, it was two weeks ago. So they've stewed on that defeat. And just four days prior, it reached the final in this tournament. It's an amalgamation of emotion that's difficult to pinpoint. And somehow they have to find a way to give their absolute best tonight. Remember in that two-week stretch as well, Mike, that not only were they off just prior, it wasn't just that semifinal. It was four semifinals in the span of 10 days. I mean, how many teams in their history have had the opportunity to go through that? So they navigate half of that and now get here an opportunity. Five of six editions we've seen either a Costa Rican team or a Honduran team take this down, get into the final with an opportunity. Obviously, one of them's going to win it, and we understand that. But what sort of momentum are you going to carry with you? Olympia, this team has not been able to bag goals recently, but they've looked magnificently on the defensive side of the ball. Alahuense, they're tight in the midfield. Good overlapping runs outside. We'll see an interesting little tweak at the left back spot tonight. But both managers very understanding of the situation that they're in and the opportunity that's present in front of them. And they really couldn't be managers in different situations right now. For Olympia, Pedro Trollio has led this group now to four straight domestic titles and in second place in the Honduran Domestic League, only two defeats all season. They feel like they're in position to potentially win a fifth, but more importantly, Trollio quite clear this final important to his legacy with this club. A club with as good a legacy as any in Central America. And on the other side, Dev, for Alo Alense, what a roller coaster 18 months it's been for Fabian Coito. He looked like he had Honduras going in the right direction. Then the octagonal came. They completely imploded. He was out six games into the 14 game campaign. And yet here's the Uruguayan manager returning to Honduras at the stadium that is likely his nightmare scenario given how it ended with the Honduran national team. Their people, despite reaching a semifinal domestically, despite reaching a final internationally, who are questioning whether or not Fabian Coito is going to have his job after this final, which is quite the turn from where they were about three weeks ago. There's two parts of that conversation that you can answer. Number one, that's the precedent that's been set for this organization, right? And Alejandro Wense. The other side of it is, is it's a trend and they're following the critics, the naysayers, if you will, because you and I were part of those, those international games, and so we understood and saw how that played out. But the other side of that for Trollio is an opportunity. Remember, you can look at the goals that haven't come his way recently, but this team, they're used to bagging a ton of them. 11 games running, it was sixes, it was sevens, it was fours, keeping the shutouts as well. The good news is, again, I go back to it, defensively, they've been able to keep themselves sound. Now when you reach the final, now it's time to turn it on. They arrive to the field, Olympia and Alawalense, two former champions. Olympia won the first edition of this competition in 2017. Will it be bookends? Alawalense won it in 2020 when no one was there to watch on the tail end of the shutdowns related to COVID-19. Everybody's watching now. What an atmosphere and what a way to say goodbye to this tournament. This is the first leg. We are in Tegucigalpa, where the flares, the drums, and the fireworks have all arrived along with these two teams. It's Alawalense of Costa Rica and Olympia of Honduras. They'll play the FIFA anthem. Then we'll take a look at the lineups. We'll kick off this two-legged affair here in Tegucigalpa.
barrage of fireworks overhead. Here we go in Scotiabank CONCACAF League. The 22 initial combatants exchanging fist bumps for Olympia. No Herman Mejia. He was sent off in the second leg against Motagua. Yellow cards in the 22nd and the 27th minute. But the real surprise, Jorge Benguche replaces Jerry Benson like for like up front. Still tactical and capable with Brian Moya next to him. Myler Nunez, his 101st appearance at the professional ranks. And how about on the inside? Jorge Alvarez gets the start for the only remaining member of that 2017 winning final. They'll take photos. The kind you remember for a lifetime if it all goes well. The kind you're more likely to light on fire if it doesn't. White and blue balloons, red flares. It's a cornucopia for the eyes here tonight in Tegucigalpa. Drew Fisher of Canada does the honors here tonight. It is a crew made up of three Canadians and a fourth official from the United States. Fisher has overseen five Voyager Cup championship finals, the Canadian championship. He's also overseen Olympic qualifying finale, a 2-0 Mexico win over Honduras, and the 6-0 under-20 Olympic and under-20 World Cup final between the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. Here's a look at Fabian Coito's Alualense and Dev in the semifinal. They were already up 3-0 after one leg, so they've made six changes, but this is their best lineup. Cruise control and simple enough the front three. Watch them invert Gondola and Lopez on the cuts inside. Of course, Johan Venegas, the competition's all-time leading scorer, 16 goals in 18 appearances in the ninth spot. Love the configuration within the middle three, by the way. They're tightly knit, and they love to control the tempo. 60 years of history on the international stage between Alawalense and Olympia since the 1962 CONCACAF Champions Cup. They've met 22 times in totality. Six wins apiece, 10 draws. Notably, Drew Fisher has only officiated one match in this tournament. It was against Alianza of Panama in Alawalense's opening salvo in the tournament. For Alawalense, they had to knock off Alianza of Panama and then Alianza of El Salvador in the quarters. Real España in the semifinal. For Olympia, Municipal of Guatemala in the round of 16. Didi Yunhen in the quarterfinal. And their hated rival, Motagua, in the semis. And Scotiabank CONCACAF League reaches its apex in 2022 in Tegucigalpa. The first leg of this finale begins. Olympia of Honduras, Alawalense of Costa Rica. And an early blast from distance that doesn't cause any uh, distress for Alawalense. Aubrey David flies in. The flag has gone up, and both players showing an injury early. Ryan Moya up front. David had pointed to his head. So the athletic training staff has taken the elongated look. You know, Mareta sends it away. Gondola. Foul conceded by Gondola. Set the tempo early, huh? A couple little challenges here and there. Some of the stats coming in the game, you and I were quite taken back by, whether it was the home records or 
since the first legs in general. The champions look like only one team's ever lost the opening match and then come back to take down the title. Olympia will know something about that. That was the 2017 edition against Santos. Of course, that went on to a decision from penalties, 4-1 to one overall. And, you know, Mike, the, the rhythm within these games can be so interesting to start off because of nerves, how tense you can be being on the road. All ahead for Gondola. And stripped away, Olympia's handled that with ease. I mean, make no mistake, Pedro Trollio said, don't read social media yeah. to his players in the lead up to this. It's really easy to get caught up in it. As you go down a rabbit hole and you're not exactly sure how to get out of it, it starts affecting your mind, gets into the training, into the flight. Easy to take over any of your thought processes and it can it can really be a cause for concern for, for managers. You know, we have conversations all the time about these things, like how different it is to manage players in the modern era because of the influence of the public, specifically social media, and how different, difficult it is, excuse me, to handle. It's a little bit different than, you know, when I was around and all you had to worry about was the local press running you into the ground. Now everybody's Pep Guardiola. After Beckles conceded the corner, Snagged by Edric Menjavar. Who's taken offense to the additional contact. Johan Benegas, the all-time leading goal scorer in CONCACAF League, having words. There's not that much in it. There's certainly a little bit of contact on the goalkeeper, but... Nevertheless, the tone has been set. Yeah, bingo, yeah. A little how do you do early on. Away by Borges. Notably tonight, Brian Ruiz is available. Set to retire following the World Cup with the Ticos in Qatar. For a player who has pulled down CONCACAF Player of the Year among his many accolades. Do anticipate he'll play a healthy role in this series. Got away from Chirinos, who scored six goals in 16 games in CONCACAF League. Benegas. Taken back by Cubero. Alex Lopez. Quite the battle still on now. Lopez. Gondola. Ball flick back toward goal, and Benegas will chase it. But easy for Menjivar. Gamboa. Gonzalez. Alvarez. Pinto. Swings it across Chirinos. Saw the return. David got tied up. Play on. I was with Torino's on this one. Look for the contact. Great movement by Moya coming back across the middle. Actually opened up the space that Chardinius was trying to check in behind. Look at the hand. On the outside, reaches high as well from Aubrey David. Watch that little tweak I mentioned coming in. Ian Smith, obviously the mainstay on the right side. Rala Huense, the left a bit more in rotation. And Aubrey David, since coming over from Saprissa, more than capable at the center back spot or one-on-one -on -one situations at the outside marking back, just getting caught out of position a little bit. Physicality 
Although in theory would have gotten him in trouble. The referee didn't agree. Chirinos, first touch for Benguche. Corner, Olympia. Benguche tied up with Gonzalez. Now the service for Olympia. Punched away by Marrera. He didn't in, to entirely expect that in on the hands. Nevertheless, Alvarez pushes forward. Corner Olympia. It's hard to hear yourself think in this. Carlos Sanchez scored the winner against Motagua. Curls that in. Get another look. You know, Sanchez was twice a runner-up in this competition with Motagua, 2018 and 2019. For him to be the player that ultimately sealed Motagua's fate, it's the most successful yet least crowned in this tournament. Well, certainly some of the defensive escapades have funneled over into the <laughs> Olympia squad, haven't they? Sanchez delivers. Medetta got it away again. Nothing from Alvarez. You wonder if Medetta loses some of this a little bit. Notice the hesitation off the bat. And when he leads, he doesn't come with both. Almost gets caught in the group just inside the top of the six. One hand instead of two for him. He's, he's usually so confident in those situations. Why not come right through it? Miguel Aju, the 22-year-old starlet, has gotten some of the time in CONCACAF League, including the second leg of the semifinal when it was considered out of hand against Real España. But Mereta's long had uh, one hand on the captain's armband in this group. And throw for Smith. Smith was on that Santos de Guapolis side that lost in the final to Olympia. One wonders what's going through his mind tonight, if not deja vu. Well, that was the coming out party for Chirinos. If you remember, running the golden ball of the tournament, actually went out of that game injured. He played really well. That was when the international scene started to look around a little bit more for the youngster at that point in time. Five years removed. Some things have certainly changed. Bright moment. Chirinos. Angles end line. Chirinos crossing. It's in. 11 minutes in. What a beginning for Olympia. Just talking about the greatness of Chorinos. Watch the one-on-one. -on -one. The little shimmy with the hips right down to the byline. Beautiful ball cut back across. He has to judge the pace oh so appropriately. Too high and the runners come down underneath. The cutback has to drop immediately. He did it 21 minutes in to that 17 final. But he was the goal scorer this time. He repays the favor. 
Jose Pinto does the job. And Olympia has a home goal in this first leg. And as we've discussed, winning at home in the first leg has been quite the omen. Pinto again. Sliding in Benguche. Driven away Gonzalez. Dev, there is such a cliche of the nervy first leg of a final. That is not at all what we've gotten. No, not whatsoever. And at least for Olympia, it's the front foot. It's go, the tempo. And you say the immediate response after the opening, probably 30 to 45 seconds, where Porto's boys stayed a little bit higher here. But no response whatsoever. I mean, they cannot get on the ball to save their lives for such a tight-knit group, especially within the midfield. Alex Lopez, Borges, and Cubeto. That is the engine room. They're so good about these little tweaks to the right, to the left, dropping down in. But all three stay in unison, and it allows the back line to start to push higher, get Ian Smith in those overlapping runs, get involved in the attack. It turns this into this aggressive unit up top into five or six-man front. None of that inside of 15 minutes so far. How's the reset by Pinto? Coming off a set piece from the corner where they just recycle it. They've still got a high line. You get the ball down in. Times it to perfection. Pulled back by Ben Gucci. Chirinos available. Flicked ahead by Alvarez. Alvarez. Chirinos. End line. Contact. Penalty. Gonzalez cannot believe it. There is no VAR. This crowd, their epic rejoice cannot be undone. The live play it looked like there was contact, Mike, and you can see it much better there with the right foot coming back across. Ian Smith leaves his feet. Beautiful touch, by the way, by Chiritos. Recognizes that the challenge is coming. He wants to hit this thing back across, doesn't have support. So it's aggressive in nature that the odds he's going to get to it, slim. But he's got the change of pace, quick change of direction. Makes Smith force a decision. And the referee points to the spot. Moya has won CONCACAF League with Olympia in the inaugural campaign. Now a chance to strike. Moya! What a save! Marrera, massive! When it mattered the most, with Oluwalense teetering on disaster. Well over 400 games of experience. Is there any goalkeeper in CONCACAF more prepared for that moment? Mereda looks shaky on early corners. Sanchez, corner never got there. I go back to the pen, 100% a foul. But telegraphs this the entire way. Notice the hips open, very easy, and the ability to read it if you're Moreta. Still got to get low, the explosion coming to that bottom left-hand corner. That could have been the dagger in theory, Mike. Instead, an opportunity to keep yourself in it, which is a ridiculous statement to make just 16 minutes into a final. It did feel like the winds were picking up. Driven away by Menjavar. Olympia leads. Pinto in the 12th from Chirinos. Whistle goes against uh, Alawalense. Moya drew it. You've got
got to get on the ball here. Got to find a way to slow some of these attacks. Too much of it is reactionary. It's gotten into a situation where regardless of the side of the field, Mike, it's the one player is beaten, and then all of a sudden, Smith is stepping up. Gonzalez is out of position. Gamboa has to rotate over. Cubero too deep, too much space in between the midfield three. Sanchez again. David the first header, further by Smith. For Olympia, it continues. Wave after wave, it's Pinto. Can Lopez get a hold? He can't. Well, that'll do the job. Four flocking for La Liga. Borges wide. Lopez flicks it over the top. Gondola! Menjivar, but offside. And Menjivar may have gotten kicked in the hand. Not may have, 100%, and it's close. Just a split second on that bottom shoulder for Gondola. Beautiful ball movement. Love the idea by Alex Lopez. Why so many touches? Doesn't matter at the tail end of it. Brave by Menjivar to step into this. Edric comes high. He's trying to push it away. Surprised that he almost doesn't lean through the ball. Really, really close by Gondola on the ball up over the top. That's the unit that I was talking about, though. Cubero down underneath. Borges had gone wide. He finds the little pinch back over by Alex Lopez. And they're able to get an opportunity out of it, but of course, the opening goal, beautifully taken by Pinto. Wonderful service by Chirinos. And now the concern. Monteta, the massive save. Menjavar on the other end. Anytime you see the glove come off of a goalkeeper, that's usually a, a major problem. There's a reason they don't take their own gloves off to tie their shoes. That's what you're for, Devin, yeah, the center the, backs. The cry for help, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. well, Menjavar cleared to continue. We've looked at it time and time again. His shadow certainly offside. Not sure that his body was. But if the flag is going to go up, those are the concerning collisions that come into play when you don't blow the whistle immediately in those moments. Of course, perhaps unacknowledged in a hectic moment as well. Lopez, Honduran Maradona, as it was once known. on that in a moment. David, take it away from Banegas. Swept through, that's too far for Benguche. Alexander Lopez was well known within Honduran circuits. He came up through Olympia, and uh, after beginning to peek around the youth national team, all of a sudden Houston calls and says they've heard about this tremendous player, the Honduran Maradona. Well, it turns out that that was an elaborate prank that was set up by a now journalist for The Guardian, who has since gone to Houston. They had already been scouting him before that rumor had, had erupted, but also went to speak with Alexander Lopez in person and spoke about his life in football. It's a tremendous article in The Guardian, one that's uh, quite the journey, to say the least. In the end, both sides ended up coming away satisfied with the result, which isn't always how you anticipate those meetings going. So perhaps we say it in jest, but really we don't. The Honduran Maradona gives it away and uh, shot well over. In the end by Smith. It's the advance throw we were asking for from Ian Smith. Also the same reason that it got them in trouble on the opening goal. At least on the penalty. Cut back across, not available on the back post run because of that high line. It is part of their DNA. Bailed out by Moreira. 
keep them within striking distance, but to see a balance within the attack as well. The way that they pivot. If he's going to come, I want to see them slide over a little bit. Let Gonzalez occupy some of that space. Gamboa can round out the back three with Aubrey David just coming a touch. That's one area that can get them into trouble. The way that they like to attack with their outside backs and then nobody steps into the space that was just vacated. Easy enough to see that for Chirinos 20 minutes into this match. By passing Peckless, Chirinos couldn't latch on. Recovered by Gondola. Full Panamanian international for Ala Valenze, who scored more goals than anybody in CONCACAF League this year, 18. They haven't played in two weeks since they were sent out by Saprisa in the Costa Rican semifinal. For Olympia, it's been lackluster to say the least of late. The fact they scored a goal is in and of itself a bit of an accomplishment. They hadn't scored in their last three all competitions. When you stretch before that, it wasn't much better. Well, you and I were joking ahead of time that their inability to find anything on the attacking side of things has only led to two in the last six. The other side of that is they've kept five clean sheets. Mm. So certainly not as beautiful as Foley would like to see. And guys like Moya, Ben Gucci, or Jetty Bankston. The consistency on the other end, never in doubt. Well, they just welcomed Houston Arboleda back into the group from injury as well. And when you put that entire group of players together, Pedro Trollio has told reporters over the last couple of weeks during this dry offensive spell, this is the same core that set the Honduran goal scoring record in the league over the last 24 months. Same players, same strikers. Surely they'll figure it out. It's Pinto who figured it out tonight. Ball wound forward seeking Smith. It is better from Ala Valenze. 20 minutes short of halftime. Well, some of the biggest attacking teams around the world have gone through the exact same situation. You know, you can stay on this side of the continent and look at a team like LAFC and MLS. You can move to some of the bigger names. Manchester City has had their problems. Barcelona has had problems. PSG. Everybody, though, able to overcome it. And I admire Trollio for staying with the personnel because it's the reason you're here, right? The ability to, to be so consistent and give you such a regular look. Why stray away from the fact that you're in a slump? Borges wins the free kick. As Borges, noise doesn't concern him. He's the drummer in a metal band. This is louder than any shredding guitar. Borges swings it forward. Gonzalez get over the line. Gonzalez alone touched it. It's a missed opportunity. It's one of the ones that they'll put on the highlight reel. Assuming they come out on top of this. Yeah, they who's highlight? Way back. Well, they'll make fun of you in the locker room. Okay. They're you know, the better ones. Giancarlo Gonzalez, the center back, coming up trying to grab themselves the equalizer, not to be. But a better response after the goal, Mike. Much better. The disposition of the team seems a bit more positive. They've been able to step on the ball, which is, of course, their bread and butter. Control the tempo side to side. More balls into that man's feet right there, Johan Venegas. Pedro Trollio, and uh, what a job he's done. Ended a three and a half year title drought, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you've won 34 of them, 
That's a few and far between length of trophyless despair. Paulo Valencia has won the Costa Rican title 30 times. If you want to talk drought, it was 2014 to 2020. In 2020, they qualified for CONCACAF League. Actually won that trophy in the, the grips of the beginning of the pandemic. Costa Rican football was shown more or less around the world, including on national television in the United States, because they were the only show in town at the time. Anywho, Alawalense qualified for CONCACAF League and went on to win it, never having to leave their own stadium to do it. Gondola. And that's wayward. Cubero lets that back to David. Foul one once more by Celso Borges. Positioning by Brian Moyes he started to step down in. Jorge Alvarez has been caught out a few times at that central spot. Chorinos and he missing the combination about 90 seconds prior. A massive opportunity pushed away. Borges, Heder Gonzalez, another goal kick. That is because of the combination play between Alex Lopez and Celso Borges. In the midfield for Alajuense just keeping E. Pineda, Alvarez moving. Much better job here over the past couple of minutes. Though the set pieces haven't been too kind to them. Alvarez, Chirinos, overlapping run, winds it ahead for Nunez. Both these teams are bound for Champions League in the spring. Two of the six to qualify for the pinnacle tournament in CONCACAF. This is the finale of CONCACAF League as we know it. It's instead going to be replaced by a a multitude of competitions intended to replace it. More regional than ever, providing a wider path than ever into Champions League. It served its purpose. That time is gone. Ball for Chirinos. Gamboa drives it away. Falls to Benegas. Lopez. Supporting the width. Lopez. For Benegas. Now Lopez under it. On the Borges. Who still runs stridently, although maybe not firing the pistons as fast as they used to. Alexander Lopez got the cross away. Gondola! Beautiful work by Alex Lopez. The individual effort on the sideline. A little bit narrow. Sanchez has been, but as he pops out, Lopez recognized there was a clear diagonal right down into the corner. Beautiful rundown, and you can't get much better service than what Gondola has experienced on the ball just whipped in. A little surprised that we've seen some of the hesitancy out of the attacker up top so far. Two or three situations where he gets it on that favored right foot to cut back to the inside instead, waiting for support. And the ball that's just come in doesn't really attack it. More so tries to go straight up and meet it. And Gucci dropping in, couldn't maintain it, did get tossed aside. the entirety of the squad has started, started out quite right. We certainly haven't had to call Ben Gucci's name a lot, which isn't the worst thing when you're sitting on a one to nothing lead. The problem is, is that's really been one of the 
major talking points for the past couple of weeks for Pedro Trollio. The inability to find the special moments from his talisman up top. Whistle against Gamboa. I've seen worse challenges. I've seen better. How's the short ball right at the top of the 18, if you please? Now it's picked up. Two bricks in the wall. Carlos Sanchez. And we'll find that in Alajuela. Jose Pinto in the 12th minute of play. Olympia grabbing the lead in the first leg of this CONCACAF League final. The second leg will be at Estadio Alejandro Marrera Soto in Alajuela, Costa Rica on Wednesday night next week. Road goals are in effect. They invited this space. Moya took that space. Nunez. Served over by Pineda. Who's in for the suspended Herman Mejia. Sent off against Motagua. Offside flag. Goaded, perhaps, by Gonzalez. Just having trouble with some of their runs as this first half has gone on. They were brilliant 15 minutes in. The organization much better from the back line of Alajuense. And Moya, who's been so active, as he drops down in here, the little pinch by Cherinos. I don't mind it, but as the ball comes back out to Nunez, he doesn't stay wide. He's attacking the exact same space that Chirinos has just stepped into. And the overload gives you lack of options on the attacking movements coming forward. Much more free-flowing in the opening 10 to 15 minutes than what we're seeing now. That looks disjointed, and they're having trouble figuring out exactly what the next step is going to be. It just comes down to communication. side by the way these teams met in CONCACAF League in 2017 and in January 2021 which was the 2020 CONCACAF League one ousted the other en route to the trophy in both instances go figure and now this time it's far more direct and far more final Gamboa. Well, that's a needless foul. Not the best from Bacalus pushing over Benegas. Now one of them will become the first ever. Time champion. A tournament that's been dominated by really the Costa Rican squads, especially the run from 18 to 20, Herediano, Saprisa, and Alajuense. The 20 finals saw Alajuense and Saprisa against each other. Borges forward, down by Gonzalez. David juggling. 
Never got to Menjavar. Just made the argument on the other side that the runs were off for Olympia. How's it feel for Alahuense? Venegas, Gondola. Ball whipped up over the top by Alex Lopez. There's another one. It's just a, the timing. That's where we talk about the two weeks off, Mike. A team coming in four semifinals in 10 days, October 4th to the 14th. Of course, Saprisa dispatching them in the Ramada division of that argument. Two to nothing on aggregate overall. Taking down Real Espana. CONCACAF League semifinals, but that gives you time to question you know, the overall product and form. What do we look like? How do you keep everybody healthy? How do you make sure that you're getting in the proper workload? And the chemistry, the subtle nuances that you know so well, getting back up to game speed, you can train all that you want over and over again. But if you're not playing matches, the body, the mind doesn't react the same. It's a little bit slower. And you're seeing that play out in the first half here tonight, especially for the front three, Venegas, Gondola, and Lopez having a lot of trouble getting on the same page as the midfielders. Borges and Lopez have become more active as the first half has gone on. But if you recognize, there's been no combination play within the actual front three. Haven't been able to get off of each other. Touches, yes. Communication, sure. But quality opportunity, absolutely not. Driven away. Seeking two vertical runs. Both fruitless. Flicked ahead, Chirinos. Whipped across, what a save! Manana denies Benguche. Finally, Benguche gets a word in edgewise. This is a problem right now because Brian Moya is just making himself at home right in front of this back line. The midfielders have to understand, especially Cubero, the calls from the center backs. He's got to drop the second that Moya starts to go. If he pinches up a little bit, you come back to him, get on the shoulder. You don't have to win a tackle. You don't have to win a ball. You have to win some of that space back, though, because Moya is doing an excellent job coming high against Ben Gucci and then coming down underneath in reception. Sanchez delivers. We'll try yet another corner. Swung through again. And Medina. Just got whacked in the hip. He elevated for it. Lionel Mareta got pounced on. Watch the lower body. How much contact was there on that right hip? It's like the hip quad area. This is the confidence that I was talking about, though, from Mareta that we didn't see at the start of this match. Very hesitant. Only leaned with one. This time he comes with both full force coming right through the box. Any attacker is usually quite hesitant to step into that space because of such a movement by a goalkeeper. The way that the first half has gone, we saw a lot of movement on the outside. Obviously, the goal comes from Chirinos to Pinto in the 12th minute, but a lot on the exterior. The match has continued to play itself out, and some of this is because of the fact that Alahuense and Borges and Lopez have gotten on the ball more. We've seen a lot more of Moya, Alvarez, and Pereira doing a really good job in this pretty little triangle on the inside, and Moya is giving carte blanche. Go anywhere you want. Reminder that he had just picked this up about 20 yards from net, right at this central location. 
drops it in. Great little peel off. No runner picks him up. And the faces of this final. One staged between two former champions for the first, assuredly the last time. Only be one two time champion of CONCACAF League. Reckless from Beckless. Benegas. Loaders forward. Return to him. Got cut out. Benegas nearly unleashed again by Lopez. Daniel Lopez is sort of been a rudderless ship tonight in some ways. Everywhere and nowhere at the same time. the 90 seconds before first half stoppage time. Both sides have a loaded bench. Olympia could go for the kill here. Benson, Arboleda, Jan Maciel, Dangerous, Olenze, got Thorian Rodriguez and Ian Lawrence back. Lawrence the outside back, but Rodriguez notable. Suarez in attacking midfield. Brian Ruiz gondola muscles off away by Nunez that's a corner Service through Menjavar. Slot David. Smith. Morera. He's the hero of the half for Alawalense. Critical stop on a penalty. And this could have gotten firmly out of hand. Didn't take the air out of the building. Did slow the tide. Two added minutes. Foul against Cubero. There's no way you're coming back from that if that, if that penalty ends up in the back of the net. Not for Moreira. Will be the major talking point heading into halftime. Certainly a better response, but fading once again here. Your biggest issue is even though. Right here, it's the movement. Foul, and that could easily come with a card. It's it's the movement and the lack of movement as well. Now, great little cut back in, but you're running into space that's just going to be closed down by any sort of defender. It's a massive mistake by Olympia because that's Benegas cuts back across. You've got all the support in the world. You don't need to take him to ground. It's a gifted opportunity. Brought out Jolente. From dead ball situations, they have certainly not been pretty so far, but this is an area of distance that if you wanted to from Borges, you could get cute and have a go. So there's tons of height. The likes of Gondola and Aubrey David, you can pick out in the box. Gonzalez has made his way up as well. Borges steered down, cleared, but it's momentary. It's David, it's a corner. Rang off of Bacillus. Well, could Alawalense 
possibly pull level before half. Gonzalez and Gamboa at the clear targets. Celso Borges. Whoa! Penalty! Gonzalez got pulled down. Second penalty of the half. And Moreta saved one. Now it'll be Menjavar in the spotlight. It was a mistake outside of the box that led to the initial foul on the second chance coming back through. Absolutely. Look at the hands. All over. Why? Why put yourself in this situation? The you've, ball's going away. You've done everything right in the first half. Away from goal, away from every player in front of you, away from Gonzalez, who is the main threat. For the center back in general to track back and get a touch on it. Off the charts in terms of the level of difficulty. Yet alone what he's already shown you within the match, although there is something interesting with Menjivar taking his glove off once again. Remember, about 15 minutes in, came back across, didn't lead with his wrists, didn't try and close his fist, open hand swat, and he took one off the boot of Gondola. Benegas is four for four in his career in CONCACAF League. One for one this year. He scored against Alianza from the spot. 21 for 24 as a professional from the spot. Benegas against Menjivar. Is it an equalizer? Yes, it is! Johan Benegas yet again. No more lethal goal scorer in CONCACAF League history. He's come through on the stroke of halftime. Trolio's going to have a fit in the dressing room. For all their wondrous play, we saw the massive mistake and then the brilliance. That is Benegas, 17 goals in 19 appearances in this wondrous tournament. Of course, the bulk of that. With Saprisa for so long, the coup that was last season. Towards the tail end of things, cup tied, unavailable. Certainly made himself available as we head to the dressing room and get themselves even in a half that they were absolutely played off the park. Paulo Alense responds a poor opening 20 minutes in particular, but an equalizer from Benegas at the spot and Pedro Trollio's side, a 12th minute go ahead from Jose Pinto. It's evaporated just as they were making their way off. At halftime in the first leg of this CONCACAF League final, it is Olympia one, Paulo Alense one.
1-1 at halftime in the first leg of the 2022 CONCACAF League final. Rain is falling now here in Tegucigalpa. For whom that's an omen remains to be seen. The second leg next Wednesday night in Costa Rica. A fortress amidst the 2020 CONCACAF League title run for Alualense. They have a road goal here tonight. Something of real tangible value. A penalty shortly before halftime to combat the 12th minute goal from Jose Pinto. Both sides are unchanged going into the second half. Both sides have numerous weapons. On to the second half we go in the CONCACAF League. Opening leg in the finale. 1-1 between Olympia and Alualense. Well, this is quite the start for Alualense. Quickly upfield, Lopez leading it back and thrust over the bar. You know, Dev, you mentioned it in the first half, including this. Honduran team in the final six of seven years. Costa Rican team in the final six of seven years. To see this tournament blossom, Olympia winning the inaugural edition when only one team went to Champions League. Now there's six, and in years to come, the Central American Cup should keep rivalries like this one alive on the international stage. It has been impressive to see how Honduras and Costa Rica have flexed their muscle in this competition year after year. Contemplative, now the touch ahead. Leading back, curling effort, what a goal, Jorge Alvarez! Oh, it's a stunner for Olympia! A positive start itself had actually come from Alahuense as the high line comes once again from Pinto. This time, the run isn't coming from him directly. Instead, as he gets down in, it's the lone soldier forgotten. Love the step up here by Carlos Sanchez. As Sanchez goes and Pinto finds him, good little pinch up underneath by Jorge Alvarez. If you're Alahuense, you're just watching continuous waves of runners come at you, but you're not able to pick up the next one. Again, the attack starts on the outside. Ian Smith loses it. Gonzalez loses it. As they step into the pressure, they forget about one of the most dangerous men in the field, and Alvarez reminds them. 2-1 Olympia. This stadium was divided. Two home teams in the semifinal, Olympia and Motagua. There is no division tonight. Highly partisan. And now in unison, these Olympia fans seen their side leap out to the go-ahead shortly out of halftime. by Olympia. Well, you can talk about just about anything in the locker room at the intermission. There's no chance that came up. Just 
stop making careless mistakes. That's what the conversation was. That's why it was even anywhere close to a match. The 1-1. One, one. The penalty. Oi! That's a card. First card of the match goes to Yael Lopez. Really the first engagement that we've seen from Yael Lopez the entirety of the match. Look at the studs here. Extremely reckless from the striker. Alvarez. What a goal he scored in the 47th. Pinto in the 12th. Penalty. All Alolense has to show for their effort tonight. Sanchez. Chirinos. Alvarez, watch out! Alvarez cuts it across. Hung up long enough. Medina quickly. auditory experience a football fans dream hit from long range gondola's nightmare For Olympia, by the way, first time since October the 1st. Six matches without a multi-goal game. David, heavy touch. Olympia seeking their third. Bouncing. Clear the goal, but off an Alo Alenze player. Corner. Jose Garcia, the man who took down Giancarlo Gonzalez, which led to the Venegas penalty. Mismatch. Ah, now they pick up the run. Looping to the backside. Borges. That left a little work to be done. Gondola chasing. Pineda. Menjabar. Lopez. Gondola. Quick shot. Save Menjabar. Sprays loose, and now he's scooped it up. Gondola with an inkling. Fired that on frame. This is the best look that we've seen out of him all match. And as he comes back to the inside, good job by Benegas, who had gone to the top part of the box, but it's that left shoulder. 
his momentum naturally dragging him across the 18. He just follows. Comes right up over the top of it. Picks out the bottom corner. It's an excellent save by the goalkeeper. Steered away by Moya. Lopez here. Alvarez. So the goals that deserve a monument. That goal is forever if Olympia seals the title. Olympia two, Alawalenze one. The second leg next week on Wednesday night in Alawela, Costa Rica. Down goes Jose Garcia. Garcia. Fully capped on Duran. The penalty away, the ball into the box, the shoulder to the face. The ups and downs, the ins and outs of a cup final. Jerome Suarez waiting to come on. A moment away, Borges. Lopez, Gondola, Garcia drops in. Advantage played. Benegas saw the overlap of Smith. to Pineda. Ben Gucci. That slide had to be perfect. Of course, from Borges, it was. Lopez swings it wide. Options. David crossing. Borges couldn't get around on it. Pinto. Alvarez. Well, we'd seen that movie before. It closed down a bit better. Lopez stabs in. David finishes the job. Thirty four years old, Borges veteran of six CONCACAF Gold Cups. Clipped ahead for Gondola. Bracketed. Garcia. Seeking away by Benegas. Yao Lopez comes off, Suarez on. One of the great young hopes 
of the Costa Rican national team at the age of 20. We knew this change was coming. A little surprised that we didn't see it at the start of the second half. Poito giving him an opportunity, saying, I'll give you 15 minutes. Well, guess what? That time has come and gone. The least active players on the entirety of the pitch, yet alone in the attacking unit overall. And all he has to show for it is the yellow card. It's, just, it's very, very quiet. And, and to be fair, it's, it's some of the decision making as well. Really good sequence just prior to the Borges missed chance at the penalty mark, where they just have to be faster. In overall play, Mike, they've gotten themselves into a couple one-on-one -on -one situations where you've isolated Venegas and Lopez up top, but they couldn't pick him out. Too many touches on the ball. Giancarlo Gonzalez saying hello with the two-footed tackle. And the argument here is going to be where the actual studs themselves are. Are they up? Didn't look to be. Does get the ball, but how close is that to the player first? The referee Drew Fisher doesn't feel like there's really any argument whatsoever, though I promise you, Jose Pinto feels a little different about it. Service through, how about another corner? Service, plenty of contact. David went flying. Frustrated with the referee, no call. Carlos Sanchez stood there and watched for a while. He wanted the challenge on the back, and there was a little bit of contact, not that much. Referee Drew Fisher awarding it because he continued to play on the ground. Still haven't passed that rule, have they? Mm. Gondola wins a corner. I'll let you call IFAB. Penalty one off a corner. Giancarlo Gonzalez dragged down, stumbling backward away from the ball. 22 in red, their clear target. High arcing ball, headed down. Well, the whistle blew. Menjivar's been bailed out. Menjivar and Benegas. Not only does he miss time this, does it come off someone's hand, even with the foul? No, off the chest. It's the second time tonight that we've seen this from Menjivar, which is lost in no man's land, coming through the box. Not exactly sure. I agree with that by Johan Venegas and Drew Fisher. Feels like he gets in the way and protrudes the run of Menjivar coming off the line. I don't see it that way at all. Well, that's not the best opening salvo for Suarez. Fabian Coito, what a story. If he's to dethrone these Lions, the finale of CONCACAF League, this is the venue. That Proved to be a horror story. The Honduran national team in Olympic uh, and World Cup qualifying. Honduras came away with nothing from the last 12 months on the international stage. 
And regrettably for Fabian Coito, who had had so much success at various stops prior, he's the one who had to pay the price. Dismissed from the Honduran national team management job. Now he leads Alawalense into the lion's den. Hard charging. At the end line. Diving header. Spear to side. Same late run. Just watch the right side of your screen as the ball comes down in. The midfield of Alahuense having real trouble. It's Cubero once again. Feels like the retreat has to come initially, comes much too deep, and then the trailing runs, which have been there all night long. That's how we saw the beautiful ball played down into Chirinos by Brian Moya on the opening goal to Jose Pinto, 12 minutes into the match. It's a very similar movement in contrast to the far side that ended up at the penalty mark, which Moreira was able to keep out of the back of the net. Very fortunate to be only at 2-1. Well, that's a bit iffy. Suarez boot extended. Olympia player head down to try and get a touch. Smith, Suarez. Typically plays as a 10. He's found himself wide. Hard. It has to be. This is so reckless. Carlos Sanchez. Well, I looked at you in the dressing room at halftime and said, is he even on the field? That's not the worst thing at certain points in time, but watch him leave his feet here. Dear Lord. When you're asking for trouble right in front of Drew Fisher. Sanchez, the uh, beneficiary of s seven games and five yellows in the league for Olympia. I sense I can tell why. Jorge's textured ball seeking Benegas. Lopez nearly. And flicked asunder. Still with Olympia, however. Benguche. Onside. Suarez. Willing to get a little dirty. Alvarez. Moya. Shot whipped off the underside of the bar and in. Oh, what a goal! Chirinos for Olympia, 3 1 up. Simple ball in that's just cleared right down the middle. An absolute no-no. Excellent touch. But the cut back across. Look at all the space that nobody steps into. Alex Lopez has the opportunity to come back. Does not. Anyone on the back line can step up into it. Really good look at Gamboa who just watches this sail into the back of the net. Anyone given that opportunity with that much space and time is gonna have a go. Best young player, golden ball winner at the 2017 and inaugural edition with a goal and an assist tonight. That's off Chirinos. His seventh goal in CONCACAF League in 17 games. Seemingly all of significance. Olympia three, Alawalense one. Borges. Suarez. 
Player fell down. Borges was looking for the ball. It never came. Borges. Finally swiped aside. Suarez went in, concedes the free kick. Dev, there's 20 minutes left here. Then the, the tie shifts. Suarez, overly ambitious on the tackle. Another 90 minutes in Costa Rica next Wednesday night. If you're Alawalense, you've got a road goal. Are you satisfied trying to leave this at 3-1 and get the job done on home field? Or do you need a goal in the next 20 minutes? You need a goal. You need a goal because historically, what we've seen, number one, the momentum is everything, right? And remembering in your brain what went on in that first match because it hasn't been pretty whatsoever for Alo Hensei. They're lucky that it's only three to one. We mentioned to you that the only time in this tournament's history that a team lost the first leg and then went on to come back and win in the second and go on to win the final was Olympia in 2017. You don't want to be on the wrong side of that argument. You have to get closer, whether you're at home or not. Much rather the one than two and expectations. Advantage, Flores. Suarez for David. Nunez closes in. David crossing. Gondola looping over the bar. Much better, though. And as you work it, just watch the timing is so much better on this back post run. Hasn't been pretty Gondola all night long. But in this second half, he's moved off that left hand flank. He's operated a lot more underneath Venegas. Would like to have seen Venegas drag this run a little bit closer to the near post. That allows more time for Gondola to get around him. He has to go around a secondary runner because of the two center backs for Olympia. If that initial run by Venegas, Mike, occurs half a second sooner, he takes that step towards it, opens up more space on the backside. That allows Gondola to not only track that run that half step sooner, but he can then step into it as opposed to coming up and meeting it. It's the same argument we saw in the first half. The two biggest attacking threats off the bench for Olympia are en route. Arboleda and Benston come in. That's in for Benguche. These are the first subs. You might think 3-1 up, you try and protect the lead. Not so fast. Moya comes off as well. And in the foreground, Brian Ruiz for Alawalense. Benson will carry the captain's armband for Olympia now. Positive feedback from Pedro Trollio. Here's Dorian Rodriguez, the youngest player to score a hat trick in CONCACAF League. It was against the Panamanian Alianza. Tarbaleda in. Alex Lopez trots off. The Golden Ball winner in the 2020 CONCACAF League giving way to new blood, the 19-year-old attacking threat. Second window used by Alawalense. For Ruiz, he replaces Gondola. And try and savor this. Nothing's guaranteed in football. But all that's really guaranteed Brian Ruiz now is four more games. 
tonight, next Wednesday night, and the three group stage games in Qatar. Other than that, it could be the end for one of the great Ticos of all time. Dev, there's a major question in the press conference in the lead up. Brian Ruiz trying to win one last trophy. The club where he began his career left in 2006, ultimately returned 14 years later. I like the idea within the personnel that can help him do that. Let's get a little bit closer with 15 minutes to go with Dorian Rodriguez occupying the ninth spot. Bring Venegas to the outside. See if you can find a way to let him run. It's Olympia on the run. It's Benson. It's leading forward to the end line. It's off the outside of the net. I was just about to say I'd play quick here if you're out of the Wednesday, but that's a real good look at a player who's just struggling for form a little bit. A couple of touches inside the 18 and escaping away from you. But going back to my point, you bring Rodriguez up top into the nine. I don't Suarez, we really haven't seen all that effective. That's a good look with Borges. Borges is always going to be the one, or at least with Alex Lopez on the field, to really push the tempo higher into the attack. But as he comes, Suarez comes to the outside a little bit more, takes some of the pressure off Ian Smith on the back line. The problem is, is the damage has already been done. Two goals coming directly from that right-hand flank for Alahuense. Where's the balance going to come from now? That's the argument where Venegas goes over there. And the idea behind it where... Danger. Pinto. Off of Smith. You now have all three. That's the theory for Fabian Coito. All eyes on Arboleda. What a target he is. He towers. He can hide all he wants. The service. Bacalos and Garcia both up there. final in CONCACAF League with its own era of finality within it. Sixty-year-old international rivalry. The two countries most oft represented in the final. Guatemala broke the streak of Honduran and Costa Rican teams winning this trophy. Somehow you always knew it was going to reside in one of these countries in the end. Borges, finally the whistle arrives. He's very fortunate that he doesn't actually take him down here. If he takes him down, that's a second yellow. You could throw him out. In the entire way, I, I have no problem with a card here. No. How much magic is there in that right leg? Over 150 caps for Costa Rica. The highest highs. Borges sought David. Gamboa sprinting. That's a foul from Smith.
beyond Arboleda. Rodriguez. No whistle, Borges. Smith. Suarez. Ruiz for Borges snaps the header back down seeking Rodriguez up from Smith has come way forward Arboleda pirouettes him off Cubero Suarez Ruiz Borges the two players for one country have their careers so intrinsically linked Borges sliced all the way through slipped away from Suarez David seek the divisive run instead David leading oh brilliant Nunez away from Benegas he's coughed it back to David Jose Miguel Cubero, David. This month, Figueroa comes on 21 years old. Did feature in Champions League back in 2020 for the club. That was the bubble in Orlando. It's actually Minor Figueroa's nephew. Yeah, behind it is to get Sanchez off the field. Very lucky to still be on it and for Olympia to still be at 11 men, to be fair. Stern talking to by Drew Fisher after the most recent challenge, the professional foul, sitting on the yellow card. Prolio's got to find a way to keep that intact. That's the conversation. <laughs> One more and you were, you were early into the dressing room. Yeah, that transcended, transcended language, didn't it? Borges off the set piece. It was contact. You're not getting that call twice. Need to be certainly egregious. Lifted ahead, Gamboa. Header down! There's one back! Gonzalez responds. Aloualense within a goal in this final. It's quite poetic as well that both center backs who have struggled all night long with the runs coming from Olympia. Your left footed center back just puts this thing up. All you're trying to do here is put it up into the box with runners from the set piece that remain. Good judgment on the backside. It's all been about timing or lack thereof within this game. But with inside 10 minutes to go, vindication possibly in the future for El Huense between Gonzalez and Gamboa. One goal apart now with another ruckus leg to come. Smith crossing. Got by Suarez, kept alive, Menjavar. Corner. Yeah, 
Now, Don Suarez, unfortunate not to be able to get onto this great little flick off the redirect, and then the back post run by Benegas. If not for the last ditch effort by Myler Nunez, this is 3 3. Nunez has had an excellent second half. Header from Arboleda, and now it's cleared. Appeal for a handball, that goes unheard. A notable adjustment to how the final is actually scored and a correction on it. Because there is the possibility of extra time in the second leg, away goals do not carry added value. So it is 3-2. But for Aluolense, the away goals are simply goals. It certainly changes the math come Costa Rica next week. Smartly done there. Stand up by Alvarez who recognizes that Ruiz and his momentum is always going to obstruct play. Just stands his ground tall. They'll take anything they can get though, Mike. Obviously the away goal rule would be great because of one nothing at home. That's it. And you're and you're set. You're on your way. And then again, why wait till then? True enough. Tie-breaking procedures differ in the preliminary round of 16, quarterfinal, and semifinal round, where there is no extra time, therefore no extra 30 minutes with which to accumulate a road goal. Borges. Well, the pendulum is entirely swung. Alawalense owning the conclusion. And they get the goal for it. Will they get sucker punched? Rolled ahead. Benson. Be really careful here what you wish for because to your point you keep going higher and higher pushing for the third you could invite unwanted pressure on the other and that was a good look at it with Bankston pushing back through you worked so hard to get it within one at three to two could easily turn and double it especially with the rapid fire we've seen the attacking unit from Olympia all night long Say there's more space here on the right hand side that they're not trying to take advantage of. Especially with Aron Suarez coming down in. Celso Borges on the little peel out. This is an area where Ian Smith, because defensively he doesn't have to track and mark. Pito's not coming. Step in behind. David. David. Menjavar. Well, Borges and Rodriguez immediately hands to their heads. Well, Alawalense could have folded under so much pressure. Olympia's got a lead. And somehow they found their scoring touch, and they weren't cheap goals either. A well-worked pass down the right side through the middle. Pinto in the 12th. And Alvarez and Chirinos score magical goals in the 47th and the 68th, respectively. This is the final change for Olympia. Zian Maciel coming on. Spent some time in the Mexican second division at Banados. The Brazilian coming from El Salvador's Aguila, where he spent the last two seasons. That's it for Alvarez. What a goal he scored. Good, great goal and a beautiful shift, to be fair, overall, who dominated in the middle of the field on the outside shoulder of Cubero. Midfield three overall, never really on their footing. Settled, angling, firing. That took quite the hop. <laughs> and uh, Moreno was up to it. Could Olympia find a fourth? I'll have a chance to do it from a corner.
By the way, they changed the name of this venue here in 2022. Finally, a Honduran team is conceded on their home ground. First in seven games. Every bit, the sound of 35,000 packed in tonight. Do they roar one more time? Benston, no. Alawalense the other way. Stoppage time commences. Banegas, three added minutes, that's it. Benston turns. David forced him away. Benston again holds it up this time. Maciel, Gamboa. Maybe they had 35,000 balloons for the pregame extravaganza. It felt like 35,000 fireworks. 20,898 for the penultimate game in CONCACAF League. Not just this year, in totality. There have now been 90 goals in 38 games in CONCACAF League this year. The journey that began July the 26th. Seven days from now, we'll pull the curtain down on the entire enterprise. 100 more seconds here in Honduras. Olympia, they won the title on this ground. David through, Rodriguez! Never going to happen working this far away with Beckles just trailing over the right shoulder. Good pressure by the center back, but Positive touch off the right foot to drop the hips, then come all the way back across. Highlight reel would be the kindest way to put it. Some would call this a tad premature. So I was just going to say it's a little premature to my liking. So the way that Alavuense has been playing coming down the stretch of this game. You and I are never premature in these moments. There is plenty of time. Ruiz drops that back. Cleared. Suarez can't get there. 20 more seconds. Ruiz stepped in. Foul. And his penultimate game for this club will conclude in defeat. The one with a tremendous comeback to get it to one goal. He'll embark back to Costa Rica and close his club career with a chance to hoist a trophy. Either through penalties with a one goal win or outright with two. Menjivar sends it away. And we are headed to Costa Rica for the second leg of the final. Olympia, a 3-2 win. They found their scoring touch again. Trollio. Embraces with Coito, Chirinos and Alvarez, goals to remember. Pinto scored early, but Gonzalez and Benegas, massive responses in their time. It finishes Olympia three, Alawalense two. October 1st, you said it, it was the last time that we saw Olympia net multiple goals within a game, it was with Victoria in the Apertura, almost another month prior to hit three, but they found it. And I will say that much of it at the beginning of this game was just poor decision making from Alahuense, who never really got themselves back into this match, but they were able to grab a goal just before halftime. They do another one just before closure. 
a loss, absolutely. But they are still within striking distance and an opportunity for history. For Devin Kerr and our entire team at home and abroad, Mike Watts saying so long from Tegucigalpa. We'll see you next week in Costa Rica. It finishes Olympia 3, Alawalense 2. Good night.